What happens when an atheist, asterisk, goes to youth group? Well, we're going to find out with my guest today, Brent Kunkel. Hello, doubters. Welcome to Dealing with Deconstruction. If you're asking big questions of your Christian faith, you are in the right place. We're going to explore how faith can develop in youth group, and if it doesn't develop, what some of the ramifications are in that, and sometimes it is deconstruction. So I have with me a good friend, uh, creator, CEO, president of Maven, uh, (laughs) Brett Kunkel. So Brett's a good friend of mine from the Cali area, right? Yep, Southern California. One of your fa- one of your pastimes is surfing, is it not? It is. So it is. that just, you know, raised you in the coolness factor for everyone that's watching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyone come out to Southern California, I'll teach you how to surf. All right, fantastic. There you go. Open invitation, everybody, right? Uh, so we're going to talk about you. You have this, uh, you do these immersive experiences where you take students uh, different places, uh, yeah. places like Utah and Salt Lake City and Berkeley, California, and other places throughout the you know, I think you guys have been to Georgia, Georgia Tech University, and a few others. Where else have you been? Yeah, well, we we, we have three trips in particular, okay. and they focus on different topics. Uh, so they're called immersive experiences, but they're like they're like worldview mission trips. Mm. And we have one that focuses on apologetics, okay. one that focuses on uh, the Bible and theology, mm-hmm. and then we have one that focuses on worldview. And we do these for uh, young people, for high school, college age uh, groups. And really the idea is to say, hey, let's get this stuff that we believe leave out of the classroom, get it into real life conversations. And so we've done our apologetic trip to Berkeley. Uh, we've done it in Arizona. I mean, really, we, we do look for a college town and wherever there's a college town, there's all kinds of skepticism there and, and challenging people that we can talk to. Uh, we do the biblical trip to Utah, where mm-hmm. we talk to people of the Mormon faith and, uh, and discuss the differences between uh, our views. And so we've done them all over the, the country, Boulder, Berkeley, Arizona, uh, D.C. We're looking at uh, North Carolina, Asheville yep. area. So, uh, but yeah, the goal of the trip is really to help young people uh, who uh, who 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 have put their faith in Christ okay. to really learn what it means and to learn their their, their faith in much deeper ways mm. than they've typically you know than they've gotten in the church. Yeah, uh, unfortunately. A lot of American evangelicalism is just is shallow, yeah. and it's a very shallow view of the faith. There's not a ton of substance there. And so uh, the other thing that we help them do is ask, why do I actually believe this? Excellent. Is it just something I was taught? Is it something that was passed on to me, and I'm just I'm kind of going with the flow? Yeah. Are there good reasons to believe this? Well, that's excellent. And that's one of the things I think is lacking and I think has led to some of the movement of people deconstructing is not being able to be challenged. And so one of the things that you have done in your ministry in the past is you have been invited by youth leaders or youth pastors to come to their church and essentially play the atheist. So I want you to talk a little bit about maybe how that came about and what value you've seen kind of come out of you doing that. So how, how did that initially, because uh, that, that, it's, it's an interesting concept to kind of yeah. you know, put on somebody else's hat or someone else's worldview and, and walk into a room full of Christians and, yeah. and, and start asking them questions. So I got the idea from our immersive experiences because okay. what I would see is that when we would put Christian kids, often who grew up in the church, you know, say they believe this, when we would put them in front of an atheist Mm -hmm. or a skeptic or a Unitarian pastor, or we'd visit the Hare Krishna temple or wherever, you know, whoever they're talking to, uh, they would, they would experience a challenge like they had typically never gotten before, Mm. especially with our atheist guests that we bring in. And they wouldn't be able to answer the questions. And it would create a good level of discomfort. Because what it would help reveal in the students is that they don't really know their faith very well. Mm. Or they didn't know why. They couldn't answer the objections and the skeptics' challenges. And so what it does is it helps reveal maybe your faith isn't as strong as you thought it was when you were just talking to all the people who believe the same things. Right. And so it created this discomfort. It helped reveal this lack of knowledge. And then what it also did is it created a motivation to want to know. 
Mm. And uh, we would watch students go on these trips. And then <clears throat> that night, they would, after being challenged, they would pull their books out. They would pull their Bible out. They'd start studying. They'd ask questions. And they were no longer apathetic. Yeah. And so I thought, man, I can't get every youth group I speak to up on one of these trips. However, I can take this piece from a Berkeley trip or wherever we're at, I can take that piece, the Atheist Challenge, and I can bring it to the youth group. Mm. And so I started thinking, okay, I've got to role play an atheist. Because, you know, by this time... You know, I've, I've done my work uh, on atheism. I've talked to tons of atheists. I know their position well. Yeah. And, uh, and I would just take the arguments of these atheists uh, who, who I knew, and I would use those same arguments with the students. And so I would role play an atheist. And sometimes if the group knows who I am, you know, we'll just, I'll, I'll kind of get into character. Yeah. And if they don't, what's great is when I'm introduced as the real thing, because mm. it just adds this level of intensity <laughs> when the students think I'm a real atheist. And I will try to represent the the typical atheist arguments that I have heard from atheists themselves. I'm not trying to give a, a weak version. I'm not right. trying to set up a straw man. I'm trying to give them these students a really good challenge, a, a, a realistic challenge that they're actually going to face. No, so that's exactly. how it came about. And th- so I've I've done the atheist role play, and then uh, I've also done a Mormon role play. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I I will at times if, if there's been a few times where I've in- introduced as the real deal. Yeah. And um, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll maybe wear, you know, I'll dress up with a suit and tie. Right. And, and I'll... Elder Brett, right? Yeah. Uh, Elder, <laughs> Elder Kunkel. Oh, yeah. um, and what I'll do is I'll take the Bible and I will use the passages that in the Bible mm. that Mormons use to, uh, you know, to support their doctrines, which are antithetical to Christianity. Right. And I will argue for Mormonism and a Mormon interpretation of these scriptures with Christians. And what that does is it shows Christians how little they actually know mm. about the Bible. Yeah. No, I, I, again, I think that's, that's interesting. And I think if more uh, students are exposed to some of those bigger questions, uh, that could be a way that will help them later on in their Christian walk, because they're not necessarily wrestling with those questions at the time of youth group or, or in, you know, in an environment where there are people that are experienced enough to be able to, to answer some of those. So do you have any, uh, maybe tell us a story of uh, an experience that you had where you're kind of playing the atheist and you just saw someone, you know, something click with one of the students, or you just saw the life drain out of their eyes and, well, and they got a little worried. There was one recent uh, situation where a, a, a teenage girl came into youth group a little bit late. I had mm. already started the role play. Now, the group knew I wasn't an atheist. I just, you know, I went into the act and we, we were engaging. She came in late and she didn't know what was going on. She's sitting there going, what the heck? What's this atheist doing talking to our students? And so she texts her dad. It's like, there's an atheist at youth group. Come pick me up. And (laughs) so, uh, you know, 15 minutes later, the dad comes in the back and one of the youth leaders caught him. He was going in to get his daughter out. The youth group leader caught him and told him what was going on. Mm. Uh, We've had those situations. Um, I've had the, the situations where uh, the one youth pastor in Southern California, he brought me in, did the atheist role play. The, the, he didn't let anybody know, even his staff. So his volunteer youth workers are sitting there, and they're just getting distraught. And they're trying to engage as well. And unfortunately, they weren't equipped to answer the, the challenges. And there was one, I mean, just a sweet you know, worker, a youth worker. She was so distraught, and uh, you could just see her like just slumping in her chair and trying to plead with me, you know, and, and now the, 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 pretty much the, the consensus response Mm -hmm. is afterwards when, if they don't know who I am, who I am and I reveal who I am or after we just end the role play, there is a, uh, number one, a sense of relief (laughs) (laughs) because, and, and, I'll have students grade themselves. Like, yeah. how did you do on this? Yeah. And always, I'll give them a scale of, you know, one to 10, uh, 10 being the best. And they will always rate themselves as like a one, a two, a three. So they'll realize how poorly they did. Mm. But then they're also thankful. They're thankful that they got exposed. Yeah. They're, ex- they're, they're thankful that they get a, a glimpse into the, the weakness of their faith mm. and that it needs to be stronger. And, you know, I think this is one reason why some people deconstruct. They're actually deconstructing 
from a shallow, yeah. uh, weak faith in the first place that mm. doesn't have the rich substance that that it should, right? And that it does, and so it's a, it's a great it, it's a great way to help us see and to help young people see. Gosh, I don't know this as well as I should, if it's actually true. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I think uh, one of the things that I, I love about your ministry, particularly, and you explained this earlier, when you do the immersive experiences, you you kind of, you know, let them wade out into the deep waters, but then you also have a little bit of training the next day or that evening, and some of them will do that self-training. And so I think that that helps set up that person who may think they have confidence in their faith, but then experience something like the atheist role play, and then need to go back and say, okay, I need to, you know, figure this out a bit more and helps, uh, you know, they get to start asking questions uh, with resources provided in the end. Yeah. You know, it's what, what students realize on these trips and through this experience is that it's not enough to just read a book. Right. Right. It's not enough to just hear a talk on these things Mm. that, that, that's a, it's a form of learning. It's not often the most effective form of learning. It's not until you are forced to articulate this that you really maybe come to understand uh, some of the reasons for faith or a particular argument for God's Mm. existence. It's not until you're forced to speak it that uh, you realize, oh, I don't know that as well as I thought. Mm. I can't explain that like I thought I could. And so that is when training is most effective. And then when when you get to that point, uh, you know, students are just so often they're they're teachable at that point. They're yeah. willing to say, "Let me explore this more because I, I don't know this, and now I just got challenged." Mm. So it, there's a felt need, yeah. and there's that internal motivation, mm. and I, that internal motivation is huge because it, you know it's one thing for me to look at a student and say, "Hey." You really need to know the Christian faith. Right. You need to know this substance. It's another thing for them to say, I need to know this. Mm. And so it creates that motivation. And then, yeah, before the trip, we do training, like, you know, reading books, right. watching lectures, whatever. That's all good, important stuff. But I think this other component then on the trips, having the actual experience, learning how to explain these things, then really helps someone solidify mm. in their mind. Um, you know, knowing the reasons and the argumentation, and uh, and it just it, it it kind of brings it all together. Yeah, have you ever experienced uh, hostility? You know, if somebody doesn't know that you're a Christian, you know, and say in a say in that sense where, uh, in the case where the youth pastor didn't let his staff know, uh, have you ever experienced people just being like outright mean or angry or just yelling at you? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and that's the other thing I have, stu- uh, you know, groups that I'll do this for because I've actually done it for adults as well. Uh, I have them grade themselves on their mm, character. Yeah. Okay. All right. So set aside the arguments for yeah. a second. Uh, how do you think? If, if, I, if I was the real atheist or if I was a real Mormon, how do you think I, I experienced the group? Mm. Like, would I walk away thinking, hey, disagree with those folks, but you know, they treated me with real kindness and respect. Yeah. And oftentimes the groups will rate themselves low on that. Yeah. They'll, they'll see they got worked up. Yeah. They'll see they got defensive or they got upset. There's been a couple of... Uh, a couple of things in, in particular, a couple of times in particular, I remember. I was doing this in Southern California. I was uh, role-playing the atheist. The group didn't know. I was the real deal, or that I wasn't the real deal. Right. Um, so they thought I'm, I'm, I'm an atheist. There's a group of adults, probably 100 adults or so. And towards the end, uh, I, we kind of run its course. The group didn't do very well. And you can see there's some frustration. And, and you know, throughout, there's a little bit of mocking here and there. And at, at the end, I said, okay, let's, let's do one last question. And so there were a couple of people who were pointing to this older lady. Yeah. They, they're pointing to her, like, call on her. And she, so she, you know, she raises her hand, so I, I call on her. And so she says to me, she says, well, you know, Mr. Kunkel, the reason why you're an atheist is because you want your sin. You want to live in rebellion against God. And, and so I responded to it. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I said, hey, this is a, you know, this is a fallacious argument. You're, you're, you seem like you're attacking... Uh, my belief based upon its origin, and it springs from some kind of moral rebellion, yeah. you know, and this is a genetic fallacy. And so I dealt with it, and she didn't have anything to say to that, because right. it was a bad argument. And so she looks at me, and she says, well, sometimes the Bible tells us to not throw our pearls before swine. And then she sits down. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, 
Oh, so so you're calling me a pig? pig right, right. <laughs> you know, and so th- there's uh, what I did a role play at a church, and this is another church in Southern California, and I I role played the Mormon. In fact, you mm. can see this one on YouTube. Yeah. If you just like search for Brett Kunkel Mormon role play. Yeah. We put the video up on YouTube because I think it's instructive. Yeah. But you can hear midway through the conversation, one of the guys I'm engaging with. Uh, I'm on the stage, he's down in the audience, and we're engaging, and he's mic, he's ha- holding the mic, so you can hear him, but he gets really worked up yeah. and, and ticked off at me, you know? And now, here's the great thing. Yeah. Uh, again, th- th- it, it's a way to reveal, you know, not only our lack of knowledge, but sometimes our lack of character. Mm, mm-hmm. And uh, and so th- that guy in particular afterwards, when... Uh, you know, we were, I was talking to people after the, the role play. He he came up to me and he apologized. He yeah. said, "I'm sorry," and he realized, "Hey, that was not how you're supposed to treat someone." Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, it, it, it's instructive that way too. Yeah, and and you know, sometimes Christians, I think one of the reasons they get defensive, they get upset, they get worked up, maybe and treat someone with some hostility mm-hmm. is because they're not confident in what they believe. Yeah, they're, they they don't. They don't, uh, you know, have confidence that this stuff is actually true. Right. And, and that confidence comes not just from thinking it's true, yeah. but from having the reasons, knowing the evidence that supports yeah. it, being able to think carefully. And so, so there's a defensiveness that can come with that. Yeah. And, uh, and then sometimes it's also just some bad character <laughs> that, that the Lord needs to work on. Right. Uh, so yeah, so it, it, it's good in that it reveals that that as well. Right. And, I, and I've seen, uh, you know, in my work on college campuses, oftentimes the kids that grow up in youth group are told lies about people that believe other things, particularly atheists, that they're out to get them, that they're, you know, wolves in sheep's clothing in a sense, and that they're all, they're, you know, they're baby eaters or whatever, you know, whatever extreme yeah. thing they're told. And I think one of the things that, you, you know, your experience reveals is that that's not true. I mean, you really are putting on that hat. You're doing your best. You're, you're not being defensive. You're not yelling. You're not getting angry at, at those people um, in, in the crowd and that they're saying, okay, hopefully they'll realize Okay, this person is role playing, but he's role playing accurately, right? His, yeah. his whole thing is accurate, and so they can be like, "Yes, I don't, you know, not all atheists are just terrible people. A lot of yeah. them are just really nice, good, you know, people that just genuinely disagree with Christians." Yeah, and I want to represent the, the, you know, the atheist, the, re, the, you know, the atheist friends I have out there, yeah. who, you know, these students or these adults will encounter. Mm. You know, not every atheist or atheist professor is like the professor on, you know, God's not dead. Or, right, right. You know, yeah, these, exactly. These, sometimes we caricature these these individuals mm. and we misrepresent them. And it's always an angry atheist who's out to get you. And, and hey, I, I know some atheist guys, that, they're really friendly. Yeah. I mean, you, want, you don't want to sit down and yeah, definitely. have a drink with them or, you know, share a meal with them or share life with them. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and so I want to represent real people. Right. Uh, right. And 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 you know if when we when we present the caricature, and then you meet the real thing and you realize oh it's not like that oh yeah. he's not, then that can that can really throw you yeah and so it, it, it's actually uh, you know Christians have a uh, a vested interest in representing others mm. fairly, and uh, and so the, so we know how to engage those folks yeah excellent. Yeah, so uh, so I, we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up here. Um, but really, I appreciate what you're doing, and I think it's really helpful for people uh, just to kind of engage with some of that stuff. You have your own YouTube channel, so if yeah. people want to check out you, uh, you know, they can find your YouTube channel. They can check out Maven. You do a great podcast with your wife, where you're talking about parenting and uh, yeah. you know how to raise uh, godly kids with a worldview. And you know, I appreciate your ministry. So thank you so much for sitting down with me and sharing some stories. Yeah, thanks for having me, Tim. Well, if you are on that deconstructing journey, I would invite you to join our Dealing with Deconstruction Facebook group. You can find the link for that in the description of this video. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel if you are on that journey or if you enjoyed this conversation, and definitely check out Brett's channel. There's some videos of him doing the atheist role play, doing the Mormon role play, as he talked about, and those are great videos. With that, we will see you next time as we deal with deconstruction.